Good morning from Yami B TV. Wishing you all well today. Sending splendid love to you all as usual on another glorious day coming from down here. I'm really hoping that this sunshine brings you the best it possibly can today. Now, I've been asked to do this subject over a long period of time. Right, you know what I'm like when I get fidgety and nervous, but I'm going to do it. I feel a bit composed to try and do it. You remember, I don't like to offend. It's after all, it's only my opinion, but some of you have been messaging me and... It's accusing me, I suppose, of losing my bottle sometimes when it comes to answering, as far as many of you are concerned, from down there in Manchester. Um, simple questions by way of clarification or knowledge, what's fact or what's fiction, from what you know and what you saw in a prison setting, Uncle Yami. And I'm going to do my best now um, to do it in the Yami way, I suppose, right? Now, we're talking about the legendary um, Rest in Peace, Paul Massey, who are classed as a prison mate, right? So we knew that. Oh, all right, I spent longer with others in those conditions, but I spent time with Paul Massey and I liked him, right? So I've got a good idea of what his personality is like, etc., etc. Now, we know that Salford City holds so many secrets. It's probably one of the biggest cities in the world, really, because a lot of stuff happened around Manchester. Let's not go into um, Salford itself um, with the crime thing from way back in the day, because I put it on par with London, believe it or not. Um, but the quite first question of Paul Massey becoming, applying to become mayor of Salford City. Now, I don't look things up, right? And I hear that my knowledge is that there was near enough 2,000 votes nearly for him to be, have a chance of getting into that big position of being mayor of Salford City. Now, throughout my life, with every single criminal that I met, some of the biggest names, some of the smaller names, but for whatever, from all around the country, only in Colombia and Russia, I've heard of this, such things going on. And we know that governments have been accused of being corrupt and that kind of stuff as well. But he would be the first man, supposing Mr. Big from Manchester, public enemy number one, to apply for a position of being mayor. Now, I wholeheartedly believe that Paul Massey, in the end, at the end of that, sad bit there was trying to change his life and wanted that position i totally believe it to help a lot of people especially the sufferers in there and the needy in that city right so i believe his heart was in that many of you are saying he still had his hands in this and hands in that i don't know i go by the figure that i met heartedly and you know what for him to be applying for such a big position he's really sticking his neck on the line because you're asking me my take of looking at it from an ex-criminal's point of view now, think, think about it, the criminal underworld, like how we all used to think, and some of us probably still do, that how would they have felt when he was applying for such position, friend and foe and enemies or whatever, all into one? Like, I'm thinking, in reality, the kind of talk would have been um, and was that he, he know, he know, he's got so many secrets and he's been in the thick of it all his life. He knows everything about everything that's ever taken place in Manchester. For him to go and jump over to that side, it's going to have a, a lot of uh, people turning up their nose and bad feeling. You know, when I when I first heard the news, sadly, about, you know, the tragic um, death of Paul, because I did, obviously, I'm not in Manchester. I, I don't, you lot know more than me, but a lot of things, because I'm thinking that was, the mayor thing was about six months before his death and that kind of stuff, or not long before, not, not you know, the build up to his death. So that passed through my mind, you know, all kind of conspiracy theories. And how would the police have been thinking? Because they did, they didn't like him, man. I don't believe that hand in hand shit. They were kicking off his door regular and knew they fitted him up many times in life. He beat a lot of cases as well. They wouldn't have, they wouldn't have been happy, the police as well, that he would have been going to hold such a massive position. Bloody hell, talk about power. Gordon Bennett, mate. Very serious. So during the early bits of the sad death, I, a lot of things passed through the mayor, the police, you know, all things were, were coming, coming into my nut. Now, that's my take on it. And that was the word that there was a lot of disgruntled and old villains and, and new villains, I suppose, that weren't happy about him going to, if he did uh, win that, to get that position, my days, no, 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 too many, Paul, too, was too many skeletons in the closet. And from jumping from that side, it's a big leap. Um, and you, you, either way, you couldn't have won. What a risky thing, Paul. Oh dear, no, 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 that's my, that's honestly, that is my take on it. It's a very, very, nothing, no one has ever applied for that. The suppose Mr. Big Public, 
Wow, for a massive um, city like Salford. Now, the questions that you've asked me to clarify, right, from a prison category A jungle point of view now, I got on all sides. I sat on the fence. It was too political for me. I loved everyone down in Manchester, right? Um, firstly, ask me about Stevie Lydia. We know that this is um, Paul's brother-in-law now. I, I, the, 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 I look back and I can't remember them now. I, I thought that I could picture them being in the prison at the same time together, but no, I cannot. I cannot clarify that. And I don't think they could have, unless it would have been the sentence before Paul when Paul was doing the big one back in the day, before he got, the sentence he was doing before he, he got the stabbing, when he'd done the nine or ten years out of the last case, it would have been the sentence before that. They might have been, I don't know, I can't remember, right? But I knew there was, I knew there was politics around some of the great men that I met from that city, but I never got involved. Now, you ask me, and it doesn't really matter. It's not relevant to the matter who would win. Some of you that don't know them both, um, Stevie Lydia and Paul Massey. Um, Paul Massey could look after himself. It's only about my size, five foot eight, but he had a big heart and he would always fight back, right? Uh, but would he beat Stevie Lydia in a straightener and a one on one? No, I can't see that, right? So that's not my thing. It doesn't, it's, it's not a thing for anything, but I'm just answering that question first. The other question you asked me was when did Slaney. But he, because he, he liked Steve, he loved Stevie Lydia. I have to say that Slaney loved Stevie Lydia more. I think he, he met Slaney um, before more of the politics come and stuff. I can't remember, but I can't can't clarify. I can clarify that if I if I was thinking who Slaney would choose side so to go on right in the jungle, I would have to say that he would choose Stevie Lydia over Paul Massey. Right, hundred percent. Now. The other bit you asked me to clarify about, I was there, look, look. Allegedly, Paul Massey paid a man to go and do another man, basically. He sorted him out, allegedly. I didn't see it, right? But I was meant to have been in the vicinity at the time. Now, he's meant to have paid a man and the man didn't do the job. So the man didn't do the job and then Paul's allegedly called him into the cell and said to him, listen, hey, I've paid you and you ain't done it. Far as I know, right, and this is this is facts. I'm sad we can't we can't we've got to balance it out on the scales that the man in question pulled out something and hit him straight on his head, right? The white wall, okay, right, right. Don't no need to know who it was and blah blah blah. It wasn't me. It was definitely wasn't me. I'm percent with me. I wouldn't have taken on such a a risky thing like that, right? So that did happen. He did get hit on his head with something by you know the politics. Of that, so I can clarify that that happened, and it did, it did, it did. Now, the other thing, what was the other? There was another bit that I had to, I had to cover. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about the Russians and the Colombians and the governments and the way that they used to get, they get themselves in a position of, you know, having both sides of, you know, the criminal fraternity and that side of things as well. But Massey puts a big, big thing in there. I know I'm babbling now. Um, I'm trying to remember what was the other thing that you wanted me to clarify. The fight. Um, with Stevie Lydia and a guy from London. Right, I'll clarify that again. They were examining it in the cell. Um, they got into a tangle. The geezer was quite big, but as far as I was going to hear, that Steve was winning that fight. And it, it got in a tangle and he tried to bite um, Stevie Lydia. That's what happened when Slaney came in and backed it and done the geezer, right? So, and then he saw him somewhere else and done him again years later for Stevie Lydia. He did, right? That's a fact. That's not no... Um, Big secret, he loved Stevie Lydia, so I clarified that. What was that last point you asked me to go? Oh, yeah, you've done well here. Um, no, we'll leave it as it is, and we'll, we'll if we're going to add anything up. And when I when I come back later on, I'm going to let off some more bombs, all right? Send a special love to you. Well, I hope that's a bit of enough for you, if you get what I mean.